بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Good morning everyone Welcome to session number 16 of ACID 22 conference I am Dr. Ahmed Shahata and I will be sharing this session which will run from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. There will be 11 talks and every speaker will have up to 10 minutes for the presentations and at the end of each presentation I will open the opportunity for questions. Uh, in this session, we have different papers. The first one, which I don't think is, uh, the presenter is not here with us now, state of the art smart, smart doorbell system. But uh, we will skip this paper for now because uh, the presenter is not here, it's not ready yet. We will move to retention contracts under hidden, uh, actually we have, Dr. McD, credit card theft using social engineering over WhatsApp, a survey study. Can you please, Dr. McD, share your screen with us? Yes, okay. Just give me a minute. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, I can see it. You can okay. start, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Majdi Kabalin, cybersecurity expert uh, and a master degree student in Prince May University, working as a consultant with multiple firms uh, around the globe in cybersecurity. Um, my experience related to cybersecurity today, I will present a, a, a case just happened in the last two years in, in Jordan related to credit card theft and fraud process done using WhatsApp uh, along the country. Uh, and actually, it was targeting politicals, uh, financial employees, uh, doctors in universities, and significant uh, peoples. So today, I will uh, segment my presentation for five segmentations, introduction and physio analysis description, technical analysis and statistical analysis, and, uh, uh, and last, the conclusion. As we all know, social, social engineering is considered as one of the most critical threats to security and people privacy nowadays, which is uh, uh, a general uh, verbal or written interaction that happens between a person and an institution, usually in an attempt to manipulate, convince, or deceive the other party. In most cases, it occurs over the phone uh, or in person and often relies on security, uh, appreciation, or deception, also called phishing, spear uh, phishing, USB donation, SQL injection, or execute. So we have multiple names for this process of this kind of attacks. The power and harmful impact of social engineering has been virtually increasing over the past few years uh, due to complexity of uh, security techniques that have been developed uh, in the term of technicians along the cybersecurity and related attacks. Now, the human-based theories considered were the behavioral trust theory and the quantitative uh, response theory where the first on implies the truth humans shows to our digital communications, which is described why the victims do interact with such attacks and with such uh, fraud actions. My colleague, Dr. Uh, Abdullah Mahari, he is an associate professor working in the University of Jordan. Uh, he did an analysis for physio analysis description describe the behavior of the victims uh, and why they are interacting with such attacks and fruit proceeds. <clears throat> so he described this uh, and classified it for three theories. Uh, cognitive ability, lower honest humility, and lower consequency and dislike in conditions. 
the inter the interpretation uh, of Albert Ellis theory in physical con consulting. So we have described uh, the physioanalysis uh, uh, techniques that used to hurt the victims, uh, and then uh, linked that with uh, a technical analysis of how this action done and how they take advantage of a human normal reaction with, with, with these things. We have analyzed about 300 cases happened uh, in, in the country, uh, and we will see in statistical analysis uh, significant things related to classification of these people in terms of their jobs, their sex, their ages. So what's related to, to technical analysis, we have just uh, simplified it in five steps. Step one, which starts with creating a fake account through a social network. Uh, uh, like Twitter or Facebook, uh, these fake accounts just hold or use the name of well-known people uh, uh, to, to, to make it more con confusing for the victims. Then they use the social engineering to deceive the victims of their importance to the account holder who represents a known person most likely and offer to add them to a private group on the WhatsApp location. For example, you will receive a message from uh, an account holding a name of a well-known person that telling you because you are a VIP person and you're related to politics or financial, we will add you to this group on WhatsApp. So you will receive a verification code. Uh, please uh, let, uh, see, send it back to us. And here starts the process of curing the account on WhatsApp. Step three, it's the implementation of the process of seizing their accounts on WhatsApp application through a deception of obtaining, uh, obtaining authentication numbers, which then will be used to create a business account on, on, on WhatsApp to hold this account and control it. Step four, choosing a network for new victims linked to the new victim through his contact list. This step is actually critical and do need uh, uh, deep technical analysis. What's happening here, once the attacker uh, take uh, over the control on, on the main account that uh, holding a real name and real person, he will start connecting people uh, from his circle in terms of politics, media, financial, and do the same thing with them. So he starts like a mesh or a grid. He starts with someone and then he will make a deception with the old people and contact list uh, belong to this person. Then start the process of theft from ATM cards seen by buying digital currency in most of the cases. So what's happening here actually, uh, uh, the, the attacker starts sending messages to these people and deceive them that he is in a problem uh, or in a stuck in an airport or he need to buy something from the internet urgently now and he have problem with his credit card. So he contact you from a well-known person to you, for example, from your brother account or your friend account. So ethically, you, you, you don't normally have to check or call this person back and make sure that he is the one who is contacting me over WhatsApp. So what you actually do, you are interacted positively with him and you send him your credit card and he starts the process of money thrifting, which is a actually close to money laundry process. So these people just buy uh, digital currency uh, uh, using this money and then turn it again to real money using a lot of services like Anki Option, Trade Max, uh, Forex, and these things. Now, according to statistical analysis for the victims, we have significant uh, numbers, actually. It was uh, highly significant that males are uh, targeted more than females and uh, after analysis of these victims it was actually clear that this process is linked to media and politics so in general uh, worldwide uh, uh, males are found uh, much higher in density in terms of politics and working in politics now in terms of uh, fraud claims there was a significant increase in uh, the case of shopping so most of these uh, attackers just uh, claim that they have a shopping problem, shopping issue with the car, and they need 
help in this. Uh, and then comes the hospital case, the, the, the healthy medical case, uh, and other uh, you know, uh, claims have been also analyzed like airport stock, online payments, uh, and there was a significant uh, number for no clear reason. So some people just uh, got a message that they need the money or they need a credit card, but they have some private issues they cannot talk about. Now, regarding age and sex, it was uh, highly noted that older people are targeted more because uh, they have less uh, you know, educational skills in terms of technology, uh, uh, and they do actually trust technology in such cases. Uh, younger people was less uh, in terms of reaction with these attackers, and they are uh, more aware, uh, which has led us to the need of highly provide awareness in terms of cybersecurity for such cases. So in terms of uh, targeted victims, uh, it was highly clear that politicians are the most targeted people, uh, and then uh, people working on media, uh, and then working people working on consultation uh, term, uh, which is uh, significant actually because uh, those people, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, have awareness about such attacks. But what actually happens is that the attacker take advantage of their position and their reputation, and he convinced them that. Uh, you, you, you are someone who's working in consultation and we need to use your consultation experience in our group. So you will send you a code, please send it back to us so we use it. As of conclusion, financial fraud through social media applications, especially through the WhatsApp location, have increased uh, worldwide, actually not just in Jordan, but we talk about 300 cases uh, from General Security Department in Jordan. Uh, and regarding this, and as a, a specialized procedure was conducted related to the use of this type of fraud in Jordan, and it was found that the use of fraud in the process uh, consists of two main parts. Starts with the uh, uh, technical side and then uh, goes to the social engineering side. So this is my presentation. Thank you all for hearing. Uh, any questions, I'm ready. Uh, thank you, Dr. Magdi, for the presentation. Uh, the topic is a very interesting topic. Just, I have one question. How is, how is it possible to avoid uh, theft using social media? What's the way to protect people from that? Uh, actually, the most important thing uh, in terms of protection is awareness. So we need to teach people that you you, you had never seen the, uh, any code back sent to you from any social media service because this code actually is a secret code uh, related to verification process. So nothing more than awareness is important to these people, you know? Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Magdi. Uh, thank you for presentation. Please stop sharing the screen. Okay, thank you. We will move to the next paper. I'm not sure if the presenter is with us now or not. Okay, we can move to one of the presentations as we have video. Uh, COVID-19 tracking application for uh, the presenter is Dr. Julia Etani from Lebanon. Uh, I will share the presentation, the video of the presentation with you. be introducing our application COVID tracing application or COVID top we please go on the top for can it has to be like options uh more for shasha for shasha lah ta'ala the official the motivation i'm sharing our shit tour share and i'm not sure sawan share the video doctor other bus أساس نتك نطمن إن الصوت يمشي مسموع. فير فيديو. أيوة مش فير فيديو. لا لا شير سكري. آه أوكي. شير فيديو أوكي. شير. 
So I will um, share the video from the file itself. Okay. One minute, please. I tried my message before and it was working. The way I grabbed it, I clicked on it. But there is no problem. Let's turn the sound off. Because it's not working. Hello, in this presentation, we will be introducing our application. شغال الآن بشكل جيد زلان. شغال أيوة دكتور. COVID tracing application or COVID tap. We will have a coronavirus outbreak overview. Discuss the World Health Organization recommendations. Discuss some tracing applications developed by many countries, and we will introduce our application. Discuss this front and back end and the expected risk. Uh, COVID-19 has been affecting our country for almost two years with new strains appearing every day. Uh, so the world health recommendations uh, remain the same, wearing a mask, uh, frequently sanitizing, uh, maintaining social distancing and uh, ventilation of closed areas. However, the one thing we seem to be able to control through mobile application is social distancing. It is very important because one day of breaking it causes uh, an increase 2.4 more days and the corona outbreak so if we have one one infected person and this person gets in contact with three other people and each of them is in contact with three more over the course of 10 cycles this person would uh, in fact uh, an estimate number of 59,000 people so one week of uh, maintaining social distancing decreases the outbreak by 17 days and makes the infection rate drop by 20 percent so some uh, some countries such as the Korea, they uh, developed tracing applications in order to uh, to limit the virus spread. So we have Korea with Co100, uh, Australia with COVID Save, and Singapore with Trace Together. These three applications use contact tracing in order to monitor the user movement and notify them of any COVID-19 encounter. In the case of Co100 and in the case of COVID Save and Trace Together, they trace the affected people's movement and collect data for further tracing. However, the case of Co100, Korea had to use electric response to force the people to stay at home. COVID Save's data relies only on the user's command consent and trace together was only de developed for Singapore. We also have Qatar with Ahtiraz and France with two Zonti COVID. Both applications they use Bluetooth and Google location services in order to notify the user of any COVID-19 encounter, monitor each user's health state when it comes to COVID-19 and track the virus spread across the country. However, Ahtiraz and two Zonti COVID don't implement social distancing and in the case of France's application, the users cannot turn their Bluetooth off. And in the case of uh, Malan, it is uh, a Lebanese application developed by the Ministry of uh, Health using Kotlin and Firebase in order to monitor the uh, COVID-19 outbreak among the users. Malan, the three main features are registration done using Firebase's one-time password. The user enters his uh, phone number and Firebase will send a silent notification to make sure that the phone is still online, followed by the one-time passcode via an SMS. And if the user returns the one-time passcode and it matches the one sent by Firebase, the user is authenticated. And when it comes to distance measurement, it's done using Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy, where each phone is associated with a unique ID, and this ID is shared every 20 milliseconds to 10.24 seconds. Then it's both post for one minute, and then uh, it is turned off once the Bluetooth is off on either phone. Uh, let's take a case study to understand how it actually works. Let's assume we have six random users, five of them have their Bluetooth turned on. Uh, the uh, random uh, the unique IDs are sent in all directions and each one will store uh, the strong signal. And if we have three users indicate that they are positive with the virus, then the uh, Users who were in contact with him and had their Bluetooth turned on will be notified. However, in the case of the user that did not have her Bluetooth turned on, she will not be notified. The final feature of mine is contacting, where the Ministry of Public Health contacts each user that indicates he is positive with the virus to guide him through the next steps. Now, uh, man and ensures that the user is authenticated no internet needed uh, to operate the application however social distancing is not maintained bluetooth shutdown after a while and data cannot be used for further analysis well, and when we try to install it and use it for further evaluation it did not really work so we 
propose our application COVID tap, uh, which is a mobile application used to check for social distancing and alert the users if they were in contact with a positive patient. Now let's assume that we have two random users having COVID uh, tap. Uh, their location is constantly shared to the back end and if the back end uh, detects that they were in close contact for more than 10 minutes, the uh, server will alert them to maintain social distancing. The, if a user indicates that he is positive with the virus, he will first verify his test results using Firebase uh, machine learning kit and then the server will alert all the users who were in contact with them and the users will have the ability to edit their profile, log their temperature, contact emergency services, chat with our bot, and monitor uh, worldwide COVID statistics. Now, if the users uh, indicate that they are at home, they will not be notified to maintain social distancing, but they will be able to use the uh, application features uh, normally. Now, COVID tabs front end is the contains three main features, distance measurement using Google Location Services, chatbot, and the optical character recognition by Firebase. Now, uh, geolocation is the act of acquiring the device's latitude and longitude, and uh, for more accuracy, it uses nearby devices, so the more nodes there are, the more uh, accuracy we can gather. As for a chatbot, it is done using three phases, the scope phase, where the uh, intents uh, are created, meaning the, uh, the inputs and statements. Now, the design phase, uh, the possible uh, user uh, uh, the possible uh, chatbot uh, responses are uh, are defined at in the integrate phase. These this the intents and the entities are linked together to create a chat, as we can see in this uh, screenshot. Our chatbot is designed to uh, answer COVID-19 related questions. As for optical character recognition using Firebase, it is done to uh, authenticate the test results of each user when he indicates that he is positive with uh, the virus. As for COVID-19's backend, we will discuss the uh, database uh, using MySQL and the APIs. Now, our database is used to um, save the user's inf information upon his successful uh, registration and to uh, save his uh, constant location updates. As for our APIs, we will first discuss the add new location, which saves each user's uh, location. And it is called every 10 minutes to check uh, the distance between uh, the users. And the COVID uh, alert API to check the users who were in contact with any patient who states that he is positive with the virus. Add new user is used to save the new user's information, log in to check the uh, user's credential and to update user is called after the user one, uh, updates his profile. So our application's interface consists of a login screen and a sign-up screen where the user uh, enters his basic information. It also allows him to set his home location and to view the worldwide statistics and the user will be able to chat with our bot. Uh, indicate that he is positive with the virus, monitor his temperature, log out, edit his profile, and call emergency services. Now, uh, we chose Google Location Services because it is used by 80 to 90 percent of all Android users. Uh, battery percentage uses is relatively low, and it is uh, very accurate uh, due to due to the use of a geolocation. Now, uh, once we tested it, we noticed that uh, it is uh, uh, very accurate up to 6.6 uh, 6, uh, centimeters was the actual location whereas the detected location was 6.4 uh, centimeters so after uh, testing it on uh, different uh, measurements we noticed that the average error is 3.3 percent which is relatively low now the users are notified uh, whether they are violating social distancing or uh, they were in contact with any patient uh, who indicates and he is verified to be positive with the virus. 
now uh, our app will uh, authenticate the user using email and password uh, it has several interaction features uh, it notifies the users if they were in contact with a positive uh, patient it will ensure social distancing and it has a home setting to uh, Disregard notifications regarding social distancing and the users are at home. Now, this is it. Thank you for listening and stay safe. Dr. Sot. Uh, yeah, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Julia for the interesting presentation. Uh, uh, we will move to the next presentation, which is titled uh, Scheduling UET UCT DAX of Depths 2 on 2 Processors. We have the video for the presentation, so I will share it with you right now. Assalamu alaikum. I am Rosen Fadura from Jordan, Dhaka University, Computer Science Department. We present a linear time algorithm for scheduling in task on two processors where all the tasks form a duck of depth 2. The execution time of every task equal to 1, and the communication delay between any two consecutive tasks is also equal to one. The presentation consists of four sections. First, I will present an introduction about the general form of, this, uh, of the problem, then a literature uh, review, then I will present the grand line of our algorithm. Finally, I conclude by future research that can be follow this work. Scheduling problem have been studied extensively for at least the first 15 years. Generally speaking, scheduling is concerned with allocation of scale resources to activities with the objective uh, of optimizing one or more performance measures. As a simple example, resources may be courses and activity may be classrooms or teachers. The objective is to allocate the courses on classroom or on teachers in optimal way. Doctor, Doctor Adran. The general scheduling model consists of Naam. a set of inter... Doctor, Naam. 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 وش هذا with allocation of scale resources to activities with the objective uh, of optimizing one or more performance measures. As a simple example, resources may be courses and activity may be classrooms or teachers. The objective is to allocate the courses on classroom or on teachers in optimal way. The general scheduling model consists of a set of n tasks to be executed on a set of n processors. Each task J is characterized by its processing time, 
several criteria can be found in literature to schedule the task on processor. One of these criteria is to specify which task should be executed by which processor subject to precision constraint and may be without and may be without communication delay. Objective uh, the objective is uh, in this criteria is to schedule all tasks on the processor such that the finishing time of the last task is minimum. This program can be represented by a duck J equal to V E called a task graph. V is a set of tasks and E is a set of residence constraints. A weight BI is associated with every task I representing the execution time of the task I. And a weight CIJ is associated with every HIJ representing the communication time between the task I and J. If IJ belongs to E and the task I starts its execution time at time T on a processor B, then either J starts its execution on B at time greater than or equal to T plus PI or start its execution on some other processor at time T plus PI at time uh, greater than or equal to T plus PI plus CIJ. This problem is denoted as BM precedence BI CIJ CMAX, where BM is the number of precedence, uh, precedence uh, represents the uh, precedence constant, BI represents the uh, execution time of every task J, CIJ is the communication time between task I and task J, and the objective is to find CMAX. <coughs> we find in the literature that the complexity of the problem BK precedence BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to 0, CMAX is open. That is, this problem till now, is, uh, there is, uh, the complexity of this uh, problem is unknown, where K is fixed. But if K equal to 2, the problem B2 precedence BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to 0, CMAX is solvable in polynomial time. For any fixed k, when the precedence graph is restricted to certain special form, the problem bk precedence bi equal to 1, cij equal to 0, and the objective is to find cmax, turn out to be solvable in polynomial time. This is, is, uh, this is possible for any tree, out of tree, opposing forest, and interval order. <coughs> also, in the literature, we find that the problem uh, B3 precedence BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to 0, CMAX remain an open question. And the problem B2 precedence equal to binary 3, BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to C, where C is a large integer, is in B hard. But this problem is polynomial if the precedence uh, of the task graph is a complete binary 3. A challenging problem, problem is, to, uh, is the two processors uh, scheduling with UET, UCT. That is, the problem B2, resonance BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to 1, CMAX, for which the complexity is unknown. In the literature, also, we find that this problem is polynomial for the for tree and a terminal order and a subclass of theory parallel D graph. We propose for the, the problem B2 precedence BI equal to 1, CIJ equal to 1, CMAX, a linear time algorithm to compute an optimal scheduling, scheduling for the class of depths of depth 2. That is the graph for which the vertex set can be partitioned, partitioned into three subsets A, B, C, and every edge connect between A and B or between B and C, and there is no edge between A and C. The, <coughs> the structure of uh, depth of uh, depth 2 uh, allow us to schedule uh, first the set of uh, 
vertices A, then the vertices of B, then the vertices of C. That is, there is always a feasible schedule that satisfies this probability. From this remark, we conclude that any optimal schedule, scheduling must be satisfied the following inequality. C max greater than or equal to, un, uh, to a sale of A union B union C on 2, and small than or equal to sale of A union B union C on 2 plus 2. The general idea of our algorithm is the following. The algorithm uh, starts to find the last two vertices A1, A2 that must be scheduled before scheduling any task of B. Then it finds the first two vertices B1, B2 that must be scheduled directly after uh, A1, A2, and the last two vertices of P, B3, B4, that must be scheduled before scheduling any task of C. And finally, uh, the first two tasks of C, C1, C2, that must be scheduled directly after C1 and C2. The essential mission of our algorithm is the decision whether the vertex B1 or B2 and B3 or B4 exists or not, and the decision whether the vertex C1 or C2 exists or not. For technical reason, for technical reasons, the algorithm produces an optimal scheduling in reverse. That is, it starts to schedule the vertices of C first, then the vertices of B, and finally the vertices of A. We call every pair A1, A2, B1, B2, B3, B4, and C1, C2 a hinge. The algorithm uh, using mathematical tools find the hinge C1, C2, and if this hinge is uh, scheduled, must be scheduled in uh, series or in parallel. Also, it finds the hinge B1, B2, B3, B4, A1, A2, and characterize if these hinges are uh, scheduling in parallel or in series. So, the building of optimal scheduling for adapt J equal to A union B union C vertical A of depth 2 start by find the right hinge C1, C2 of C and the left hinge B1, B2 of B in the adjusted subgraph J, B, union C. Then find the right hinge B3, B4 of B and the left hinge A1, A2 of A in the adjusted subgraph J, B, union A or for the subgraph J, B, minus B1, B2, union A. If B upper, uh, if B uh, greater three in the last case. Finally, it schedule the vertices A, B, C alternately on B1 and B2 in the order C minus C1, C2, C1, C2, B1, B2, B minus B1, B2, B3, B4, A1, A2, A minus A1, A2. The complexity of this algorithm is O of M plus N, where M is the number of edges and N is the number of uh, vertices. For example, when we apply this algorithm and this degraph, it finds that uh, the right hinge of C is C4, C3, and the left hinge of B is B4 and I, I is imaginary vertex, that is, is not exist, and the uh, left hinge, uh, the right hinge of P is B2, B1, and the right hinge of A is A3, A2, and the length of this, uh, the length of this scheduling for this degraph is equal to 6. 
as a direction of uh, this work, it may be the following. We believe that our algorithm can be generalized for any duck of arbitrary depths and without jumping edges, that is, edges between two non-consecutive levels. If it is, if this is, uh, if uh, this is possible, then uh, the question that uh, may be uh, uh, the following. Is it possible to use this generalization for solving this problem in general case using this generaliz uh, generalization of this uh, algorithm? We hope that this is possible. Thank you for your listening. We would like to thank Dr. Hassan Qaddoura for his presentation. Uh, we will move to the next presentation, which is titled Intrusion Detection System Based Machine Learning Methods. I will also will share the video of the presentation uh, with you. Hello everyone, uh, today we will introduce our contribution uh, in the conference, which is a comprehensive survey for the machine learning and the deep learning application used in the intrusion detection system. This work has been done by me, Dr. Ola Surakhi from Princess Sumeya University in Jordan, Dr. Antonio from uh, University of Granada, Mr. Mohammed Jamus, a PhD candidate at the University of Granada, and Dr. Mohammed Khanafse from Birzat University. We'll give an introduction about this work. First, we'll talk about a large expansion of the network size recently and the increasing number of the application that is used to handle by the network nodes. This results in a huge amount of data which are shared and transferred over the network. The sharing and the transferring of this huge amount of data caused a series of a harmful attack, and this raised the need to improve the security of the network. The intrusion detection system is a system that monitors the network traffic from any suspicious behavior to provide a security for the network and the data that are transferred yeah. on over this network. They there are many classification methods which are used in the literature for the task of classification the anomaly data in the intrusion detection system. Recently, the researcher began to use the machine learning methods in order to improve the detection methods in the intrusion detection system. The machine learning methods can help in identify and classify the different type of attacks from a huge amount of data in the intrusion detection system. Deep learning methods is a subset from the machine learning that are better in dealing with the big data and the large volume of data. The research methodology of this research is to provide a comprehensive survey about the recent trend in the development of the intrusion detection system based on the using of the machine learning and the deep learning methods. This includes three folds. First, we summarized the benchmark data sets for the intrusion detection system, these data sets which are used by the researcher in the literature. Next, we selected a set of journal articles which are published from 2018 to 2021 that applied the machine learning and the deep learning method in the intrusion detection system. We reviewed the methodology for each one, the evaluation metrics used, and the data set used by each one. Then we analyzed the strength and the weakness points for each article. Finally, based on the observations, we provide the results, the challenges in the IDS based machine learning and deep learning methods in order 
for any interest uh, from the researcher for this future direction in this domain. To give a concept <laughs> and about the intrusion detection system, it is a security system that monitors the network traffic, okay, in order to detect any security violation or suspicious behavior. It can be divided into two main categories, the detection method based and the development method based. In the detection method based, there are two types of intrusion detection system, the signature based, SIDS, the anomaly based. In the signature based, it saves a signature for each attack in the database and for any suspicious behavior, it compares this behavior with the self signature in the database. The, I, the AIDS, the anomaly based, it creates a profile for a normal activity and define any abnormal activity as a derivative degree from this normal activity. The second type of the intrusion detection system is the deployment method based, which has also two types, the host based and the network based. In the host based, there are a intrusion detection system which is developed separately at each host in the network. And this uh, intrusion detection is responsible for detect any suspicious behavior on the host that is implemented in. The last one is the network-based intrusion detection system. It is developed over the network to monitor its traffic and detect any uh, un abnormal behavior in the network. Comparing the advantages and the disadvantages for these types of the intrusion detection system, we'll talk quickly about this. In the signature based, it has a high detection accuracy as it compared it with the, the safe in the database. But the disadvantage, it can detect only the known attack. So the uh, unknown attack, uh, it gets less performance uh, in detection, this type of the unknown attack. In the anomaly-based intrusion detection system, it's strongly generalizable with the ability to detect the unknown attack, but the disadvantage, it has a high false error rate. In the host intrusion detection system, it can detect the behavior of significant object, but its disadvantage, it's difficult to deploy, depends on the operating system for every host as we need a the intrusion detection system separately implemented in every host in the system. The network intrusion detection system, it can be applied in different operating system environments to detect the attack in real time, but it's disadvantage monitoring only the traffic path of the network. On the other hand, we'll talk about the machine learning and the deep learning algorithms used in the intrusion detection system. As we said, there are two types of the machine learning algorithms. The first one is the traditional machine learning uh, methods, which is also called a shallow learning. This includes many methods uh, such as the artificial neural network, support vector machine, key nearest neighbor. The, the second one is the deep learning algorithms, uh, which includes many layer in its architecture in order to identify the characteristic of the data and learn more feature about this data. This will improve the accuracy of the uh, job that this uh, algorithm are going to do. Some of the deep learning methods include the recurrent neural network, the deep neural network, the convolutional neural network, the GAN, and more. The deep learning methods are robust, more powerful in the learning ability, as it has, because of its internal structures with many hidden layers, this enables the model to extract a useful features from a complex and a huge amount of data. We'll talk quickly about the uh, traditional uh, machine learning and the deep learning methods. Uh, in this slide, we will uh, give a, uh, a briefly description about the traditional machine learning methods, such as the decision tree, which is a supervised method used both for the classification and the regression, consists of nodes and the branches. It, 
each node represent a feature and the branch is a rule where the leaf is the possible class for the classification. It's a strength that it selects the features automatically, but it's weakness. Uh, the decision tree results of its classification usually skew to the majority of uh, to the majority a class. The multilayer perceptron, it's a feed-forward neural network, consists of the input hidden and the output layer. It works for the non-linear data, but on the other hand, it's a time-consuming with the local optima problem. The key nearest neighbor uh, algorithm is a machine learning classifier, which is used to predict the class of data based on the idea of the feature similarity. It also works with the nonlinear data and robust noise, but on the other hand, it's sensitive and depends on the selection of the K parameter. The naive bias, it is the, uh, based on the assumption of a conditional probability for different class. It can learn incrementally with a strong deal with noise, but on the other hand, it does not perform well in a real data methods such as the recurrent neural network which is used in the time series forecasting application because it consists with a feedback coder compresses the data to produce a code where the decoder reconstructs the input using this it can learn the internal representation of the data on the other hand the optimization of the network needs the running of many trial and error attempts in order to find the optimal architecture of the network. Comparing the difference between the machine learning and the deep learning method, in the running time, uh, the deep learning methods uh, it consumes more time because of uh, uh, architecture, as it has multi-hidden layer architecture. The hyperparameter tuning of course, the deep learning uh, contains more hyperparameters, which uh, need to be tuned efficiently. The learning data for the supervised learning, which can be classified to either an attack or uh, normal data. Each data set defined a set of a type of attacks. Examples of this data set, the KDD cup, the NSL KDD, and the ATFA WD. So the data sets that are exist in, uh, for the researcher in the intrusion detection system contains a labeled data. This data can be classified into either an attack or normal data. Intrusion detection system, which data set used by this work to examine the performance of the method? What are the metrics used for the evaluation? And what are the contribution for each of these? works. The results from the research papers that we used in the, in the survey, which are about 30 research pa papers, are as follow. First, the using of the state-of-the-art deep learning methods is more efficient okay, than the traditional machine learning. The traditional machine learning becomes incompatible when the uh, data size increases. The deep learning methods are more powerful. A combination between the intrusion detection system with the deep learning algorithms can offer an intelligent solution to address the security threats and prevent the attacks in the IoT environment by keeping in mind the shortcoming of the IoT devices. It is a very important uh, things to be taken into consideration when dealing with the data sets of the intrusion detection. A good data set plays a fatal role in the modeling training. The up-to-date data set contains more information about the new attack. The problem of the unbalancing of this data set can be solved by oversampling techniques in order to improve the class distribution of the data set. And sample learning, which aims to find the best set of a classifier and best way to combine them, can improve the overall performance of the classification and can be used in the intrusion detection system. In general, the use of the deep learning methods is more efficient than the traditional machine learning methods, while the performance varies between uh, them depending on the type of the model and the optimization technique used to optimize the system 
such as the whole signature and the anomaly intrusion detection system. In conclusion, we can say that this paper gives a comprehensive survey about the recent trends of the using of machine learning and deep learning methods to improve the performance of the intrusion detection system. There are several machine learning and deep learning techniques that can be used to improve the performance in terms of accuracy. The paper highlights the strengths and the weakness of these methods. The detailed investigation was placed in the challenges that may face the researcher in the future for the development of the intrusion detection system based on the following aspects. The benchmark data sets, the classification methods, and the intrusion detection system environment. For the future scope, we can say that efficient data set for the intrusion detection system can be either modified by using the recent generation methods such as the GAN technology that can be deployed in the real-time monitoring of the intrusion detection system. The deep learning method improves the performance of the detection in the intrusion detection system. More development in this area can be done by using the state-of-the-art deep learning method or by using a hybrid approach that combines different deep learning methods in order to enhance the performance in terms of the security. More researches are still needed in the intrusion detection system types, uh, such as the signature and the anomaly and the host intrusion detection. A combination between the deep learning methods and the research security technologies, such as the blockchain, can improve the intrusion detection system uh, security in terms of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and uh, more. Uh, we will look uh, Dr. Uh, for her presentation. Dr. Mohammed is uh, with us. Uh, I just have, uh, can you unmute your, the mic, Dr. Mohammed? Uh, I just have okay, one question. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, I have one question. How can we avoid the disadvantages of uh, the system? One of the disadvantages was it's only detect the known attacks and less efficiency with big database. How can these uh, disadvantages be avoided? Yes, uh, as you know, uh, First of all, sabah al khair, assalamu alaikum jamia. When we work, we work with the, the IDS intrusion detection system. These days, we have also a, a generative adversarial neural network. This kind of IDS uh, that work to learn to learn them how to find these th threats from a lot of experiment and testing uh, from a, a large data set. So from this way, we can learn and we can try to find this intrusion that it will affect us. Thank you again, Dr. Mohammed, for the presentation. And uh, we hope, thank you very much. We will move now thank you for, very much. thank you. We will move now to the next presentation, which is uh, classifying Arabic text using vector space model. We also have the video of the presentation, which is number 156. So I will share the video with you now. The first one is classify Arabic text using vector space model. The first one is to find Arabic text using vector space model. The first one is to آه الابستراكت راح نتكلم عن آه اللي اختار الباحثون آه دراسه ل 242 ملخصات من الملخصات العربيه آه متخصصه في علم الحاسوب ونظم المعلومات آه قام الباحثون بانشاء نظام خاص لاستجاء المعلومات باللغه العربيه واستخدم الباحثون استراتيجيه الفهرسه التلقائيه تم انشاء نظام استخدام الفيكتور سبيس موديل على القياسات الدايس الكوساين الجقد و 
الانر وطبعا باستخدام زي ما حكينا الفيكتور سبيس قام الباحثون بمقارنه نتائج استرجاع على الوثائق العربيه اكتشف الباحثون ان نتيجه استرجاع الكوساين كانت افضل من غيرها في عن باقي الاسترجاع للقياسات الاخرى المقد المقدمة نتكلم عن إنه استرجاع المعلومات النصية لما نعرف هي مهمة ليست سهلة قد تكون المشكلة في المعلومات التي غالبا ما تكون تم إساء فهمها بسبب الغموض في اللغة الطبيعية أو أن طلب المعلومات المستخدمة الموصوف بشكل غير دقيق أو غامض هذا يستلزم تطوير يستلزم تطوير أنظمة آلية محسنة إيجاد وتنظيم المستندات النصية بحيث يمكن الوصول إلى المستندات السلة بسرعة ودقة. زي ما عرفنا في استرجاع المعلومات هناك مجالان رئيسيان للدراسة، هدفها الرئيسي هو تمكين المستخدمين النهائيين للبحث بنجاح وكفاءة وهذا ما يعني نصبو إليه. أحد هذه المجالات هو توظيف نهج قائم على المعرفة لأنظمة استرجاع المعلومات حيث نستخدم تقنيات الأنظمة الخبيرة. موضوع الدراسة الدراسات الأخرى هو إنشاء العمليات الحسابية لتسمح للحاسوب بأداء وظائفه بطريقة أفضل حيث يعتمد النهج الإحصائي لاسترجاع المعلومات على تطبيق مجموعة متنوعة من الأساليب الإحصائية يركز مجال الدراسة هذا على فعالية الاسترجاع أي أن بعض أنظمة التشغيل مثل السمارت السير قد تطوير استبداد على أكبر من عصر ذات السلة من أنظمة المنطقية تم استخدام الاوزان غير الثنائي المطبق على الاستعلامات والمستندات في النهايه تحديد درجه التشابه في كل مستند في النظام واستعلام المستخدم. سياخذ النموذج المتجه باعتبار المستندات تتطابق او تتطابق جزئيا مع شروط الاستعلام يعني انه يس اور نو موجوده او غير موجود تم استخدام نظام اتجاهات تي دايمنشنال لتمثيل كل مستند والاستعلام في الفيكتور سبيس موديل وهذه التمثيلات ذات الابعاد الوثيقه حيث الدي يمثل الدوكيومنت والكيو يمثل الكوري التي يتم ادخالها الى النظام. طبعا قمنا ب يعني النظر الى اكثر من باحث قام يعني تشابه الى حد ما في ال بعض البراء بعض الابحاث اللي متشابه مع بحثنا على سبيل المثال اخذنا جعفر عبابنه قام باستخدام طريقه الكي ان ان قام تحليل هذا البحث استخدام الفيكتور سبيس مدل على المقاييس تشابه الدايس والججر والكوساين تسلل مقارنته الى مقاييس تقييم نص الاكثر استخداما اظهرت النتائج التجريبيه لبحثه تفوق اللي هو الكوساين على باقي المعاملات الاخرى عند تطبيقها على المجموعات البيانات السعوديه. الداتا ديسكربشن يعني حتى نتعامل مع النص العربي وانشانا نظاما اليا لاسترجاع المعلومات من الالف الى الياء تم كتابته بلغه سي شارب وهو متوافق مع الانظمه الشخصيه الاي بي ام. باستخدام طبعا انفيرتد فايل انشانا فهرسا شاملا تلقائيا للكلمات في النظام الاول استخدمنا نموذج الفيكتور سبيس موديل بقياسات التشابه الثلاث اللي هي كوساين دايس والججر لاوزان مصطلح الفرنس استخدم نظام مصطلح اللي هو ما يسمى بالانفيرس ديكومنت فريكونسي تيرم فريكونسي استخدمنا نموذج احتماليا لمصطلحات مؤشر الوزن الثنائي في النظام الثنائي Experiment of our system قمنا بإجراء أكثر من 60 استعلاما على 242 نص العربي اللي تم استخدامه في هذه هذا البحث لدراسة القياسات الأربعة للدايس والكوساين والجبل والإنر لكل عملية تشغيل قمنا بإدخال الاستعلام تلقائيا ووفر بحيث يوفر قياس التشابه تم استرجاع المعلومات بناء على أو البيانات بناء على ترتيبها اللي تاخذ تشابه اعلى فيتم ترتيبها تصاعديا بعد ذلك يتم 
يعني بطريقه اقل اقل حتى اخر دقيقه فعلى سبيل المثال اخذنا استعلام علوم الحاسوب وعلوم الجدل الاول استرجعنا اول دوكيومنت كانت اكثر درجه تشابه هي 201 درجه تشابه 0.304 ثم 170.223 وهكذا حتى باقي ال الدوكيومنت وطبعا على سبيل المثال اخذنا هذا طبعا هذا تم استخدامه على الكوساين الدايس الججر الانر الى اخره من الدرجات التشابه تشمل دراساتنا طبعا كمان على غير ال ال اربع تشابهات الفكتور سيس موديل اخذنا الريفول والبريسيجن فول اوف والايمج في جميع القياسات الثنائيه التي التي يكون فيها الكائن اما ذات صله او غير ذات صله بين قوسين يعني اما يكون يس اور نو يعني جاي موجود او غير موجود وهو الشكل الاساسي للقياسات الانفورميشن ريتريفر يمكن تقسيم القياس الى فئتين قياس الصله وقياس الاسترجاع تم تضمين عدد المسنات تم استبدادها واستعلام ومؤشر حكم الملائم ومعارض التشابه في الاخراج لكل استعلام في النظام. ثم يتم فرز القائمه حسب التشابه في الترتيب التنازلي ويتم استخدام القائمه المصنفه لتحديد قيم الاستعلام. زي ما احنا شايفين في هذا الجدول جدول الاربعه اللي حسبنا الريكول بريسيجن الكوساين الدايس الجدر والانر لاحظ انه الكوساين يعني درجة التشابه كانت أعلى من غيرها بقليل عن باقي درجات التشابه في الفيكتور سبيس المودل في هذا الجدول كمان في جدول اللي بعده اللي هو جدول خمسة نفس الشيء حسبنا لبقية الريكول وبسجن للإيمجر والفول أوت وجدنا إنه قيم البسجن والريكول أعلى من قيم الفول أوت وال والاي مجر ما يعني ان اي استرجاع المعلومات في النظام كانت جيده الى حد ما وهذا موضح زي ما حكينا في جدول اربعه وجدول خمسه كما ان يعني هذا الشكل يوضح طبعا الكوساين كان تفوق قليلا على باقي القياسات الاخرى هي الدايس والجبل والانر وبين لنا انه يعني افضل قليلا من باقي القياسات. النتيجه النهائيه او الكونكلوجن اللي ممكن نحصل عليها طبعا الكونكلوجن قمنا بعمل يعني كومبارجن بدراسات سابقه اخذنا على سبيل المثال الخراشي قام ب ب يعني اخذ درجه التشابه الثلاث اللي هي الكوساين والدايس والجدر واكتشف انها قدمت تقريبا جميعها نفس الترتيب لجميع الاستفسارات. اثنين في عندنا بحث اخر او بحثين ان كان عان وشلبي قام بعمل دراسات وعلى نفس المقاييس الثلاث اللي هي الجي الدايس والجدر والكوساين واكتشف انها اصبحت عن نتائج متطابقه تقريبا. في بحث تبعنا او في بحثنا هذا قمنا بعمل دراسات مشابهه ضفنا لهم الانر طبعا وزي ما حكينا الفول اوت والبريسيجن. في بحثنا يعني زي ما شاهدنا سابقا في التيبلز والشكل انه تفوق قليلا الكوساين على باقي القياسات الاخرى الدايس والجدر والانر وهذا يثبت ان هذا التجربه كانت افضل قليلا من باقي التجارب الاخرى او على او يعني تشابه بطريقه اكثر منها من بقيه الباحثين فكان النتائج تقريبا جيده وشكرا لكم. We would like to thank Dr. Assam Handa for his uh, presentation. We will move to the next presentation, which is titled uh, Prediction of Electrical Power Consumption in Jordan. I will share the video with you right now.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بداية شكرا لكم لإعطاء الفرصة للتحدث حيث سنتحدث اليوم عن Prediction of Electrical Power Consumption in Jordan توقع استهلاك الطاقة الكهربائية في الأردن دكتور خالد منصور محدثكم محمد الحسبان دكتور ياسين الحسبان دكتور ياسر اللحام ننتقل الآن إلى الأجندة بداية الـ Introduction Related Work Data Sets Experiment Result Conclusions Feature Works ننتقل الآن إلى الـ Introduction اليوم ازدادت أهمية الكهرباء بشكل كبير حيث أصبحت أحد المتطلبات الأساسية للحياة لأي إنسان بحيث أن إدارة هذه المصدر بشكل فعال يساعد في تحسين رفاهية الناس ومن هنا أصبحت الكهرباء أحد المحاور الرئيسية للبحث العلمي من حيث طرق توليدها وجوانب الحفاظ عليها من الهدر والضياع والتنبؤ بكمية الحاجة في المستقبل ولأن الطلب على الطاقة الكهربائية متقلب ومعقد بناء على طلبات غير متوقعة من أسواق الكهرباء مما يجعل التنبؤ بكمية الطاقة غير دقيق بالإضافة إلى المساهمة في خسائر غير متوقعة في الطاقة كان هذا هو الدافع الرئيسي وراء البحث في هذا المجال لذلك تهدف هذه الورقة البحثية إلى بناء نموذج يعتمد على خوارزميات المشين ليرنينج ويهدف إلى, ويهدف إلى التنبؤ بكميات كميات الطاقة من أجل الحفاظ على الموارد والتعامل مع مشكلة استهلاك الطاقة في المستقبل ننتقل الآن إلى related work الأعمال ذات الصلة آه، تم اختيار أربع دراسات لعرضها من الدراسات التي تم العمل عليها أول دراسة هو أن اعتمدت هذه الدراسة على المعالجة والتحليل الإحصائي ثاني دراسة استخدمت الفازي intellectual maps موديل آه، من مدخلات آه، معلومات يمكن التحقق منها بدون وساطة بشرية آه، فثالث دراسة استخدمت neural network للتدريب والتنبؤ بطلب الحمل الكهربائي لكل نصف ساعة لمدة ثمان سنوات رابع دراسة قدمت هذه الدراسة منهجية تعتمد على نوعين من النيورال سيستم أحداهما لتوقع الحمل والثاني للتنبؤ بنوع الحمل داتا ست تم استخدام مجموعة البيانات من مصادر مختلفة وهي تتألف من قراءات حقيقية للشركات العاملة في مجال الطاقة مرتبة في إكسل شيت تحتوي على 7912 ريكورد تضم العديد من الفيتشرز درجة الحرارة تم الحصول عليها من وزارة النقل إدارة الأرصاد الجوية عدد السكان وزارة التخطيط والتعاون الدولي إدارة الإحصاءات العامة بيانات السيارات الكهربائية هيئة مستثمري المناطق الحرة الأردنية مشاريع الطاقة المتجددة مؤسسة الحسبان للطاقة الشمسية تم الحصول على إجمالي استهلاك الطاقة بالميجا واط من شركة الكهرباء الوطنية حيث تحتوي قاعدة البيانات المستخدمة على نوعين من الداتا سيت سمول سمول داتا تحتوي على ثلاثية ريكورد فيها تمبريتشر بابيوليشن الكتريكال كار ريونابل انرجي بروجكت والبرايس واللارج داتا سيت تحتوي على 7882 ريكورد تمبريتشر بابيوليشن الكتريكال كار داتا نورماليزيشن من اجل الحصول على نتائج افضل ودقه اعلى تم عمل نورماليزيشن للبيانات هو نهج منظم يستخدم لتحليل البيانات ال للتخلص من البيانات المكررة وإزالة الخصائص غير المرغوب فيها استخدمنا معادلة X Normalized تسوي قيمة X ناقص أقل قيمة تقسيم الماء الماكسيمم ناقص المينيمم Data Categorization تصنيف البيانات من أجل الحصول على أفضل النتائج تم تصنيف البيانات إلى خمس فئات على النحو التالي Very Low Power Consumption Low Power Consumption Medium Power Consumption High Power Consumption Very High Power Consumption حيث تم تصنيف البيانات باستخدام المعادلة التالية كاتيجوري كاتيجوري لينكس إيكوال الماكسيمم ناقص المينيمم تقسيم النمبر أوف كاتيجوري داتا سيت تحتوي سمول داتا سيت على 30 ريكورد تحتوي على 5 فيتشرز درجة الحرارة عدد السكان الكتريكال كار مشاريع الطاقة المتجددة والسعر تم عمل ليبل للبيانات كما في الجدول المبين التالي لارج ذات حسد تحتوي على 7882 ريكورد تحتوي على ثلاثة فيتشرز برايس بابيوليشن وتمبريتشر تم عمل ليبل كما هو مبين بالجدول التالي على على 5 ليبل ليبل فيري لو باور كونسومبشن لو باور كونسومبشن ميديم باور كونسومبشن هاي باور كونسومبشن فيري هاي باور كونسومبشن وذن الفترة فروم تو ريزلت uh, اناليسيز uh, تحليل النتائج يقدم هذا القسم النتائج والمناقشات التجريبيه كما اوضحنا سابقا تم استخدام مجموعتين من البيانات المختلفه تسمى 
مجموعة البيانات الأولى اللي هي اللارج داتا سيت لأنها تحتوي على عدد كبير من العينات عند مقارنتها بمجموعة البيانات اللي هم سمول داتا سيت يتم استخدام ثلاث خوارزميات من خوارزميات المشين ليرنينج لبناء نموذج للتنبؤ يتم يتم استخدام البيانات مع الخوارزميات الثلاثة قبل النورماليزيشن وبعد النورماليزيشن وتم استخدام معايير لقياس الأداء اللي هم البريسيجن والريكول اف 1 سكور والاكيورسي لارج داتا سيت ريزلت في تيبل 3 تظهر نتائج التي نستخدم فيها اللارج داتا سيت قبل عمل النورماليزيشن حيث اظهرت النتائج الراندوم فورست تفوقها على الاطراف على على الطرق الاخرى والسبورت فيكتور ماشين في المرتبه الثانيه وابدت النيورال نتورك اداء ضعيفا حيث اشارت النتائج ان الراندوم فورست والسبورت فيكتور ماشين تعمل بشكل جيد مع الداتا سيت مع اللارج داتا سيت بدون عمل النورماليزيشن تيبل 4 النتائج التي ظهرت في هذا التيبل بعد عمل النورماليزيشن لللارج داتا سيت لتحسين الاداء في خوارزميات المشين ليرنينج حيث تحسن اداء النيورال نتورك بشكل ملحوظ مع ذلك لا تزال الراندوم فورست هي الافضل في بين هذه الخوارزميات سمول داتا سيت ريزلت في تيبل 5 تظهر نتائج السمول داتا سيت قبل عمل النورماليزيشن وكما هو الحال مع مجموعه لارج داتا سيت تظهر نتائج ان افضل خوارزميات المشين ليرنينج هي خوارزميه الراندوم فورست وفي المرتبه الثانيه سبورت فيكتور ماشين ونيورال نتورك بينت اداء ضعيفا وكما يظهر بالجدول 6 انه بعد عمل النورماليزيشن للسمول داتا سيت حيث تحسن اداء النيورال نتورك بشكل كبير فيما يلي تمثيل بياني للفيتشرز الاكثر تاثيرا على التنبؤ حسب ال داتا سيت المستخدمة للراندوم فورست ريزلت على سمول داتا سيت البرايس اكثر تاثيرا الريونبل انرجي بروجكت بعدين الكريتيكال كار تمبرتشر بابيوليشن في اللارج داتا سيت البرايس البابيوليشن ومن ثم التمبرتشر في خوارزمية النيورال نتورك كانت الريزلت على سمول داتا سيت البرايس اكثر تاثيرا بعده يجي الريونبل انرجي بروجكت التمبرتشر البابيوليشن الكريتيكال كار على اللارج داتا سيت كان الاقل تاثيرا التمبرتشر بعدها البابيوليشن الاكثر تاثيرا البرايس تتناول هذه البيبر مشكله التنبؤ باستهلاك الطاقه الكهربائيه في المستقبل باستخدام خوارزميات المشين ليرنينج تم استخدام ثلاث خوارزميات لبناء نموذج تنبؤ تظهر تظهر النتائج ان الراندوم فورست تظهر نتائج افضل في حال تدريبها واستخدام استخدام لارج داتا سيت مع او بدون عمل نورماليزيشن بعد عمل النورماليزيشن يصبح اداء النيورال نتورك مشابها للراندوم فورست كان اداء السبورت فيكتور ماشين عاليا قبل وبعد النورماليزيشن للداتا سيت فيما يتعلق بالسمول داتا سيت قبل عمل النورماليزيشن كان اداء الراندوم فورست افضل من الخوارزميتين الباقيتين ومع ذلك بعد عمل النورماليزيشن كان اداء النيورال نتورك هو الافضل وتاتي بعدها الراندوم فورست ومن حيث الفيتشرز اظهرت النتائج التجريبيه ان السعر كان اهم فيتشرز في اللارج داتا سيت وكان السعر ومشاريع الطاقه المتجدده في السمول داتا سيت لتعميم النتائج في هذه البيبر هنالك حاجه الى مزيد من الفيتشرز وعمل تنبؤ في دول اخرى غير الاردن الفيتشر وركس العمل على مجموعه بيانات من بلدان مختلفه استخدام خصائص مختلفه مثل الطاقه النوويه في توليد الكهرباء مزيد من البيانات حول الطاقه المتجدده لمعرفه تاثيرها على توليد الطاقه الكهربائيه بشكل افضل ثانك يو We would like to thank Dr. Khaled Mansour for his presentation. He's not available with us today. So we will move to the next presentation, which is titled Retention Contracts Under Hidden Information. I will share the video with you. Hello, everyone. I am Prof. Zaina Hohamdi from Al-Ain University. Today, I will discuss the retention contract and their hidden information. This model is developed in collaboration with my colleagues, Prof. Belqasem Athamna and Prof. Ghalib Rifai. 
For this purpose, I prepared the following plan. I will start by an introduction to describe the research context and the problem statement. Then I will describe the proposed model and its features. The followed section defines the resulting moral hazard problem. Then I will apply and evaluate the pessimistic approach as solution to the moral hazard problem. Finally, I will conclude my presentation. Every day, individuals make different choices and uh, decisions. What is important for making the right choice is that individuals have sufficient and good information about the consequences of the different alternatives. However, the investigation of full consequences of the all different alternatives is complicated and very expensive. Consequently, individuals sometimes do not possess all relevant information to take a right. This study discussed model in which an agent decides to whether or not to perform a task on behalf of the principal. A key element in the model we consider is incomplete and asymmetric information. Broadly, the model can be split up to uh, parts. The first part deal with the model in which the principal is better informed than the agent. The agent has to decide whether or not to perform the task, but lacks information about his competence. The second part deals with the models in which the agent is better informed than the principal. In this study, we focus on the second part, where the agent takes a decision about a project on behalf of the principal. Sometimes the agent don't act in the interest of the pr principal. We analyze how the principal can use retention contract to discipline or uh, retain the agent. We consider a two-period principal agent model. There is a pool of agents a fraction of which is qualified while the other agents are unqualified. At the beginning of phase one, an agent is randomly drawn from the pool and he becomes the tenured. At the end of the first phase, the manager can dismiss the tenured. If he is dismissed, an agent is randomly drawn from the pool of agent and enters the office in the second phase. If the tenure is not dismissed, he will also hold the office in the second phase. We assume that a dismissed tenure in the end of the first phase has no chance of becoming a tenure in the second phase. Once the tenure has been determined for the phase one or two, he designs a project. We view the value created by this project as the addition to the organization long-term value relative to the business as usual. The project value depends on two factors, the tenured competence and the state of the world. The state of the world is uniformly distributed over a fixed interval. The agent knows his competence, he observes the uh, state of the world. Once he knows the value of the project, he can either decide to implement the project or to maintain the status quo and, in this case, the business as usual. If you want to summarize our model, in the first phase, we determine the type of tenured qualified or unqualified. We derive the state of the world. We disclose the informa this information to the tenured, but we keep it hidden for the manager. The incumbent or the tenured will decide to implement the project or not. The manager observes the decision on the project, then the manager perceives the project value with certain probability. The manager chooses either to keep the tenured or to replace these figures illustrate our analysis so far. The panel A and B show the range of values of project value for which the project is implemented or uh, not implemented by a qualified agent. Uh, 
getting beta equal zero or uh, beta bigger than zero, beta represent uh, the benefits drawn from holding the office. The desire to hold the office within the range of parameters for which the project wants. So in this case, the qualified agent will implement a bad project and also if he is drawing some benefit, the range is bigger. For unqualified agent, we will see that unqualified agent will not implement a good project. And if he is drawing some benefit from the office, he will implement a bad uh, quality project. So, if we want uh, to summarize, according to the previous uh, section, it shows that when the manager always keep the agent, a qualified agent more likely to implement project than a qualified one. As a result, Agent activism signals competence. In this section, we assume that the agent select the second period tenured on the basis of the first phase outcome. In line with, uh, in line with the signaling function of the implementation decision, activism is rewarded by retention, whether an inactive agent is sent home. We show that this influences the behavior of the tuners in phase one. Activism gives way to umpire building. Accordingly, a qualified agent will decide to implement a bad quality project, but a qualified agent will decide to cancel a good quality project. Such a deviation from the best first implementation decision is the price the manager is willing to pay for gaining information about the agent competence. This deviation should therefore not be considered as distortion. Selection on the basis of outcomes leads to the moral hazard problem. So far, we have focused on the on two extreme possible strategies for the manager. However, as manager occasionally observes the project value, it remains to decide about what to do in case the project is implemented, but its value remains unknown. There are two types of retention contract. The optimistic approach known as no news is good news, where the manager keeps the agent if it observe, uh, observes implementation but doesn't observe the project value and the pessimistic approach known as no news is bad news where the agent is replaced if the manager doesn't observe the project value. In, in this study, we will evaluate the pessimistic approach which rejects all information till demonstrate to be true. Under this retention contract type, the manager will keep the agent in case the project has been implemented and observe its value and uh, its value is bigger than the threshold. It will, be, it will dismiss the agent in case no project has been implemented or the project has been implemented and its value is less than the threshold or the project has been implemented and its value is not uh, observable. Our main concern is the determination of the threshold value that is optimal from the manager's point of view. The choice of the threshold determines the degree to which an agent is disciplined and also the probability that the qualified agent is selected for the second phase. The result of the pessimistic approach are shown in this figure. We show that the pessimistic approach will reduce the range of implementing a bad project. For unqualified agent, the pessimistic approach, the range of implementing a good project by an unqualified agent is extended. However, he can implement also a bad project. Finally, 
Agents have limited information that can be used to screen or discipline the employees of their companies. In this study, we have analyzed a sample model that shows the dilemma that result. The, des the desire to screen agents to improve the future well-being of the organization induces agents to become overly active to show their credentials. We evaluate the pessimistic retention contract known as no news is bad news. We have demonstrated in the which circumstances the selection alternative is preferred over the disciplining option. As future work, we will compare the pessimistic and optimistic retention contract. Finally, thanks a lot for your attention and I am ready to answer your question. Thank you. Uh, we would like to thank Dr. Zena and Dr. Belkasim. I don't think they are available now. I think I did see Dr. Belkasim, but um, there might be a technical problem with him. So we will move to the next presentation, which is titled State of the Art Smart Door Bell Systems. I will share the video uh, with you. Hi, my name is Adnan Shaud, and this paper, State of the Art Smart Doorbell Systems, is with my co author Max Thyssen. We are from the University of Michigan in Dearborn, the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. The purpose of this paper is to document the advancements in smart door bills made in recent years, the techniques and findings of several research papers, as well as the features uh, currently available in future door bill in production as are discussed along with the potential areas of future research expansion. Uh, currently, the market has a lot of door bill systems that are available they range from the ring family by amazon to the nest uh, owned by google along with many other less known models these hold a variety of features that include easy to use interfaces high resolution live streaming etc in this in the field of research papers have been written in several types such as visitor recognition, partial facial, etc. Um, another large portion of the research is done on security uh, and also designing doorbells that accommodate disabled people, such as people with hearing loss. The modern uh, doorbell has evolved into a box far more advanced than in past days. Modern doorbell can be used as security devices interface with other systems such as external cameras, floodlights, and integrated smart lockers, even with the Internet of Things as well. This field has become mainstream with companies as large as Amazon and Google being a key players. The objectives of this paper is to really come up with a new classification for these doorbells. We classify them, as I will show you later on, into four generation, generation one, two, and three, and four. And then we also propose a new uh, smart door uh, bell system that covers some of the holes or some of the deficiencies that the current system, current state of the art misses. So the paper also identified advances that could be realized with proper data set available to train a video CNN such as real-time event notification and automatic video sorting. And we'll talk more about that later on. So the first table here shows the market doorbell offering. It ranges from the ring different models to the Nest to uh, if symbol, simply say, symbols, simply save, etc. 
and compares them with respect to their connection, their integration, their storage, their capabilities, motion, voice uh, detection capabilities. All these are compared uh, uh, with each other. Uh, uh, so the the categories that we decided to classify the doorbells into our four categories. The first one we call it generation one, which is defined as the baseline doorbell that simply plays a noise when when it breath, when it's pressed. Generation two can be can have basic connectivity uh, such as uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. The key feature of this generation would be video streaming when the button is pressed. Generation three would have added integrations such as Amazon Alexa or F F FTT, which, uh, allow, which allows greater usefulness in the IoT Internet of Things era. Generation four, which is a futuristic, futuristic uh, generation, which is, does not, we don't have any model that fits this generation, but this is what we perceive to, to be the future, including all of the above in addition, to advanced vision, such as face and event recognition, which could be greatly utilized in many smart home in terms of thing applications. So these are the generation. This is the this is the base, the doorbell. This is the what we have nowadays is the ring, and uh, and this is the more advanced ring. And then this is the futuristic uh, generation that has smart in terms of identifying important events without being pressed, even without pressing the, the doorbell, it will recognize the event, it will, uh, it will, uh, it will, it will videotape the event and, and store it in the right classif classification uh, video. The research papers, we have summarized in our paper, all the, the most important uh, research doorbell offering by various authors. We classify these into uh, areas of research in recognition plus databases, notification, phone apps, web interfaces, voice communication, video communication. So you can, we have more details about it in the paper. So you, you can look into more of this. Uh, the potential improvement area that we see based on our state of the art, based on, based on the literature survey that we have done, we have possible areas of expansion, including doing a formal application of motion detection from the camera. This could include smart motion detection that only consider the motion of humans or other applicable items, such as packages or wild animals. It could also be used to reduce effect of cars in motion. So you will filter out the things that are not really important. Another area that could also be added would be to create a system that could interface with a network attached storage NAS server in order to locally save large amounts of video without Im impacting the performance of the local microprocessor uh, when access videos have been recorded. And also you don't need to use the cloud to pay monthly, monthly fees for that. Finally, package arrival and protection could be improved using object detection and instant notification could be de deployed when a package arrives or if an, an, an unidentified person walks away with the package. This could improve the ease of use in going through old videos as it could ensure the user has an idea of which video are more important, such as a potential robbery. So this way the system would include also sorting the videos into different categories so that you can easily navigate and find out, search the, 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 the video that you want. Facial recognition is a modern research direction, but the market has been largely saturated with different options. Other types of recognition could also be explored, such as fingerprint scanning. Expanding upon the ease of use of open source options is another opportunity as well. That we have also proposed an, a, door, a new door build system in this paper, which uh, relies on a data set 
that would be proposed to aid in the process of training for a system that could be implemented on a doorbell. In this videos would be, would be taken and saved based on motion, when motion is occurring in the context of the doorbell application. These videos can then be run through a pipeline that can determine what, what is happening in the video. So we could classify the video into package delivered, package taken, visitor arrival, arrived, visitor nearby, etc. So, uh, so you can actually, or not important, you can actually delete that video if it's not, uh, if it's not important. A data set created for the bill application would allow the network to be readily trained and tested for use in people's home. This data set would contain videos from YouTube that can that come from submitted doorbell recordings to be able to recognize to to be able to uh, uh, classify the video in the right category. This is the proposed system. So we have a, a camera on on the device, and we, then we have uh, we have. Uh, we, we compare what we have with what the, the database that we have through a neural network, and then we use uh, an edge uh, a computer like Raspberry Pi to implement this type of system. So this is this is the, the architecture for the new proposed system uh, that includes custom doorbell data set training existing network on new data set, uh, data set produced training CNN, edge implementation and video sorting to the, 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 the video is sorted and notification will be sent to the homeowner based on the event that happened. So the required uh, uh, of the proposed system could be identified uh, to identify the accuracy of 90% or more the data set should contain at least 300 videos lasting 20 to 60 seconds each. This would be satisfied if the system was to utilize transfer learning to pre-training trained on data set. The data should, should contain links to uh, each of the videos along with the uh, ground uh, truth table. The, this uh, should be lightweight uh, uh, implementation. So we use uh, a device such as Raspberry Pi so that the cloud computing is not needed so this way everything is done locally this is the flow chart of the how the system would should work should how should the flow the design of how the system would work finally uh, in this paper we propose uh, a new classification system for small dar, uh, small doorbell systems and also we propose a new a uh, new uh, smart uh, do doorbell system. This system allows vi a video classification network to run on edge devices to alert the homeowner of any significant events happening in front of their home without any other input, such as the button being pressed. The key aspect of this new proposal system is to create is the creation of a doorbell that is a set that can provide the searcher with a set of videos that is large enough to properly train a network that is readily to be implemented on a user's doorstep. This paper also identifies advances that could be realized with the proper data set available to train video uh, CNN, such as real-time event notification and automatic video sorting. Thank you very much. And uh, this is the end of the, the the presentation. We would like to thank Dr. Adnan for his presentation. I think all Dr. Adnan is not present with us today. Uh, actually, we would like first to thank our speakers for uh, uh, presenting their presentations here at the conference. Uh, they are very interesting and various topic that were discussed today. Uh, I will not end the session because we still have two papers, I think, that were not that are not presented yet. But uh, I see one of the names, Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Hassan. Are you a presenter with us? 
Dr. Muhammad, can you hear me? Dr. Muhammad Hassan? Okay, uh, so we have presented many papers today. We had many interesting uh, papers that are presented today. Uh, uh, we would like to thank the presenters and I will keep the session open till 12. So if someone who didn't present his paper uh, has a technical problem or something like that, he can join us and present his paper. I would like to thank the audience again and the presenters again. Uh, thank you very much.
Excuse me, the, the session is still on until 12 o'clock. If you have any comment, anything. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. First, I would like to thank all the presenters who presented their papers today. Uh, we will end the session now. Uh, we hope that we presented uh, all the presenters to present their papers. So I would like to thank them again. Uh, and if they have any question, you can send to me or the chair of the uh, conference. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.